another video, another steep climb. This time it's Coach Road, uh, average 9% for about 2 kilometers. I think it is. It's a, it's a real horrible one. Um, it's not it's not flat, uh, sorry, it's yeah, 2.3 kilometers. It's not, it's not a very nice climb just because there's so much undulations. Uh, it's a bit like the other video which I made, which is about uh, Woodlands Way, but not, not exactly the same. Uh, so it has a really horrible ramp of about 20% or something for maybe 200 meters, maybe, maybe it's a little less than 20%, but it's real horrible. I'm not sure if you remember the stage in the 2017 Tour de France uh, to Perigou, where it's basically the one where Chris Froome lost his jersey, and it's basically like that, you know, it was basically like the very last part was a super steep ramp uh, up to an airfield. It's basically like Coach Road reminds me exactly of that. So at the moment it's not too bad, it's about 10%. It stays around 10% for most of the beginning part, then it gets a real ramp at the end, and then it's like a bit of downhill. It's really weird climb. Uh, so if you're doing a TT, I'd say go full gas basically to the top of the really steep ramp, and then you get a bit of a free wheel, so just get in the aero position, and then just normally, even like 10 seconds recovery, you have enough, you know, enough uh, gas in the legs just to do like a 20, 30 second sprint, which is what the very end is. Um, when we were doing this, actually, we were coming down um, Coach Road, we saw Tori and Harley doing a TT, and it looked, it looked pretty disgusting, to be honest. Uh, my time was like 13.30, and I think Tori's was 12 or 4, so uh, I, just, I need, to, need to do better, but I was just chilling. I think we did 2.40 watts, which is about 4, 2.36 watts, which is about 4 watts per kilo, maybe a little, a little less than that uh, for me, so nothing nothing crazy, uh, wattage-wise, um, but as you can see, the, the cadence is ridiculous again. Uh, the, the thing is, like, at this wattage, it's not, you know, the cadence is annoying, but not, not super super bad, but when it gets up to 20%, it's really hard it's just, just to, like, keep going, but it's, it's a really nice road, actually, because there's pretty much zero traffic here. Uh, you can see there's a really nice house on the left, actually, good views of the city. It's, yeah, there's little, little traffic, which is nice, so you can ride to a rest, no worries. We were out pretty early, to be honest, that day, so it didn't really affect us too much. But mainly, I'd say Coach Road is a, a real solid climb. Not the best if you can do intervals, I'd say. Uh, the, just the, Well, maybe the beginning part will be alright to do intervals, but the rest of it will be a bit too steep or, or not the not consistent gradient. That's why the climb back more is all green, or, like, or something where it's just like consistent gradient, maybe 5 to 8%, that's probably the best time to do intervals on. But this climb is, yeah, it's... it's it's pretty long to be honest, so you need to make sure you're pacing well. Um, I'd say mainly you want to do even pacing on this until the very last part, leave a little bit for the end, just so you can basically sprint up that climb. Then you have a bit of a recovery on the downhill and it's for the very, very final part. Um, so gear-wise, I'd say if you're going full gas, 36, 28 is probably just about enough, maybe you want a 36, 32. If you want to chill up, I'd say 1 to 1 ratio, 34, 34 is probably fine. Yeah. Dance, to the left of me, and he has a 34, 32. You can see he's, having, he's not having to grind that much, but it's probably about 70 k. So he's a little bit lower than yeah. than if you had the option to choose any cases you could. And it makes uh, it But anyway, it's it's not too bad this time. Uh, good, real good work road surface as well. Um, doesn't have any like grades or anything to yeah. try and uh, like some of the roads, like Woodlands Way, I'm not sure if you saw it, but it sort of has like indentations on the road surface in order to make it a bit more grippy uh, in the wet or whatever, but here there's no inter indentations which slow you down a bit. It's real smooth concrete, uh, really good. It's actually a super fast descent, I think you could hit like, probably 120, 130 k's an hour down here because it's, it's pretty much straight. There's no roads really, well there's, there's like one or two roads, but there don't have much traffic so you can pretty much go full gas and no one's really going to pull out um, in front of you and maybe cause you to brake and there's no corners really until the very last course you'd have to make sure your brake pads are in good order before you did that but I think yeah if you wanted to go full gas that would probably be the best one of the best roads to do it on um, which is good because often like with these roads um, where you think you go really fast on the downhill uh, they're normally just before traffic or just before a sharp corner but this one is not which is good so you see here it's um it was a little bit steeper on that part, and it now sort of slackens off to sort of seven, eight percent, and holds that for a while. And you'll see it just just coming up, maybe hundred meters ahead of where we are at this moment in time. Uh, you'll see that it, it starts to rear up a bit, and then it pretty much holds that gradient, gets a bit flatter, and then yeah, the steep ramp, uh, which is yeah, it's like it gets that gradient where when you look ahead, you're like, is it actually that steep? Like that actually looks horrible. Well, when when it's sort of below, I've I mentioned this before. I've said it probably did that times today. Below fifteen percent. Just doesn't doesn't have that same effect on your eyes of like wow that's crazily steep. Uh, but yeah, how to climb the climb? We sort of already mentioned just the pacing. It's like it's not one which has super technical um, switchbacks or anything. Like you want, like, where it's important to look at the behind. I mean, it's, it's really not technical to be honest. It's pretty easy just to just to ride it up. It's a pretty straight climb. Which again, I don't I don't like these straight climbs as much. We have them a lot in the UK as well. It's not on switchbacks mainly because the, the 
times are really long and communicating more in a switchback um, instead of just super steep. But I much prefer a switchback because you just seem to like you're actually making progress and you're sort of going out behind. While this, it's like it's just like not mind only boring but just sort of dull because you're just looking at the same thing the whole time. It's really hard to tell your distance, like like how far you've progressed or anything, um, and it's just a bit annoying. That's why actually the Alpine climbs and Pyrenean, Pyrenean, Pyrenean climbs are good because they actually have like kilometers to go, the gradient of that kilometer, so you can sort of count it down mentally. Um, maybe you should bring that to Alpine. I guess the climbs aren't really long enough like, to justify. The longest climbs only maybe seven, seven, eight kilometers long, so it's not really, not really enough to justify it. Um, and the average climb here is probably like two to five k long, um, maybe. And then, yeah, <laughs> I'm not really sure they could justify it, but it would be good if they did. Did do out uh, on some of these steeper climbs just to see like what the average gradient was because this is um this is a steep yeah. part and this it holds this pretty consistently um yeah, next week for, for, for like a couple hundred meters and this really goes on the like like you can see the cape is already super low um, and it's it's not it's not pleasant it's not pleasant I can tell you that uh, but I think all these videos that I'm making these super steep climbs they just sort of remind me and um, well I hope they remind you that. You do just need to make sure you buy right gear, the right, buy the right gears for the terrain that you ride, um, and especially yeah. like when you go to have to like get some easier gears. But even having said that, though, like if you want to be boring, you can just ride up on not very steep climbs and get away with it. It's just if you want to ride some steep climbs and not go full gas and feel comfortable and do it back to back, you really do need the easier gearing. Um, if you just rode up the freeway every day, yeah, I summer, think so maybe that's 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 you don't that's really need that, that easy gearing. It's, it's just a, just this real steep stuff. It's easier, um, and especially when you're not going full gas. I'd say that's the main thing with the gearing. So it's nice to be able to spin and not put out that much effort um, when you're not going full gas, um, which is good. Obviously, if you're doing a recovery, you've got more money, but you know, you get, you get the picture. If you're doing like the dirty, the, the dirty dozen, which is like some sort of 13 climbs, I guess, um, and it has, I think it's 13, sometimes it's 12, I don't really understand. No, it should be 12, but sometimes it's 13 climbs. But anyway, it's like a 4,000 meters, 130. The route changes um, every year, but it's normally pretty similar where there'll just be a lot of steep climbs in combination and in succession, and this is really hard. So we did 50 kilometers, we did 2,000 meters in 50 kilometers, so it'll be a little bit easier in uh, terms of like the concentration of climbs, because it's normally like 116, 130, 4,000 meters. Uh, but obviously the distance and time and the distance and elevation will obviously be a lot harder than what we did. And there aren't really any easy climbs. There's no like non-summer or anything. They're all steep, steep climbs. Um, they really do wear your legs apart. And the other thing with like doing all these rides, which we sort of did, we didn't really go full gas on the time trial, but it's hard to pace it just because you want to go full gas on these climbs, obviously. Um, but you don't want to absolutely ruin yourself. But also you want to keep some energy, which mainly because you have lots of climbs coming up, but also because you want to keep some energy for like, between the climbs, because often it's easy to lose a lot of energy. And then on the downhill, you don't want to take that many risks. It's better just to get the aero tuck, try and save some energy, and then not take any risks, because it can be, it can be easy to take risks when you're sort of racing, especially when you're in tennis and Georgia corners or whatever. And that was how down broke his leg, actually, unfortunately. He, has, he was going down with these climbs. Um, well, now it's like, he basically, it was a wet day, was the day doesn't happen to September, you walk across the white line and just get that out. There's a super dangerous corner, it's like, you go down into Port Summit, and it'll go maybe 20% down into it. You have to turn left straight ahead to the metal barrier, if you go over that, you're probably dead, because there's a massive ravine, so it's just like, not a clever climb, not a clever descent, really, and not super safe. Uh, but fortunately, Coach Road is a little more chilled out on the descent, um, and a solid climb to practice on. I think, yeah, you definitely have to have, like, a bit of fitness to get up this climb. I, I was not one of those climbs you can just roll up, pretty much. Anyone can get up, like, you have to, you have to, you know, ride your bike a bit, get used to these steep climbs. It's obviously also a different effort, like, pedaling style compared to doing flats, so when you're just chilling out, you probably don't notice it as much, but if you're going full gas, you'll notice that if you're used to just doing flat rides, you'll find it a little bit harder to put the power out. Just a little bit like less comfortable doing it, but this, yeah. like after a week or two of doing these steep climbs, you'll, um, you'll get used to it. Um, and obviously, pushing pushing with the gears is, is different as well. So you can see here we sort of reach a bit of a, a plateau at the top, um, Havens, which is a nice gravel climb that comes on the left hand side here. Uh, I think it's called yeah. Havens and Bishop. Uh, and basically, straight on is where the steep part goes. So you just keep going up. And here's where um, 
I think on the care ones, people get up to sort of 30, 35 kilos an hour just because it really does flatten off and it gets down to, you almost sort of go downhill, I think, for a bit. No. So this is why, yeah, you just need to hold the power if you're going for a TT. Just keep, I always mention this on the flat, you just need to hold the power, maybe slip, slip up a couple of years, maybe like over spin a little bit. So maybe up to 100, 110 cadence just to keep working. Yeah. On different like engines, but also just like give your muscles a bit of a rest, and then that can really help you just to sort of settle down into a rhythm, and then you get back to holding the power when it gets a bit steeper. So you see here, it's like that was like two or three percent, and then it starts to ramp up. And from here, you still can't really see the steep part. Like you can see it ramps up a little bit, but when you turn the water, you'll just see it, and it's just like it's probably three or three hundred meters, two hundred meters max. But it's just really steep, like, um, yeah, not pleasant at all but to do. But it's um. It's, it's just good fun. Like I really like pushing myself on this on the real steep stuff like this. Like it's fun going full gas up like a five percent climb, but it's not really the same as when you're going like as hard as you can on the steep climbing. You you can start to see it now. You can see it ramps up, but it gets it gets real real steep. Like but for a long time, that's the thing. Often the climbs will get twenty percent for fifty meters, but this gets twenty percent. Maybe I think the average is probably maybe eighteen to twenty percent, but for for a lot longer period. And also you don't get a fast run. In, like you've already been climbing for a decent amount of time and you, this is really when it gets tiring like if you were going maybe 30 k an hour into the base and if this was the only thing yeah you just hold 600 watts you could probably get up the whole thing and you'd barely you barely slow down that much and well you would slow down but like you wouldn't get below 10 probably but here you can see we've started at almost 10 and it's only going to get more painful so you see the power's going up to 3 315 320 so i weigh 60 kilos this is well over 5 watts per kilo for me um, and i'm holding this i can hold normally hold about five watts per kilo for 20 20 minutes to, well the fact five watts per kilo is my fdp it was an eight minute test but I've, I've only held it for about 20 minutes or something but we'll do a test soon um, hopefully i should hold 320 for 20 minutes that's that's my prediction but we will see um, based on my fdp uh but i think the fdp is slightly skewed because i'm better at anaerobic efforts and the eight minute test is uh, skewed towards the anaerobic efforts but anyway you can see this that was a bit of a tangent going on a bit of a tangent but you can see the gradient is steep here about 18 19 percent um pretty horrible 47 cadence you know the deal hurts 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 get easy gears that's basically the, the general message of these if you want to do them fast um you can see down here is that in the saddle swaying a little bit it, it does hurt even with the 34 32 but you can see he's now at the saddle i'm feeling pretty confident and we're now bringing up to 400 watts uh which is which is pretty painful at 50 cadence like the amount of the amount of torque going through your legs is huge like when it's probably 400 watts at 50 cadence maybe 800 watts at like 90 or 100 cadence like that's the sort of power you're putting you're, the torque you're putting through and then this is what i'm talking about so you get here and if you, i think if you if you sort of sprint over the top and just hold the descent here i'm literally not pedaling i'm just trying to gain as much speed as possible uh, but i probably should have started pedaling and then if you sort of again sprint up this little climb and there's another descent and then there's one more climb um and that's often i find these climbs are sort of easier to pace because if you empty yourself at the very top it's then really easy just to like save that energy and like here you, you obviously sprint up to like 35 40 k's now and then just hold on the air and you probably go 50 60 k's now into the bottom of this maybe um, and then just absolutely gas it as hard as you can up this part when you're sprinting like this you can you can hold a lot more power than you think you can because you're using that anaerobic power that you sort of haven't tapped into that much on the climb and then this last part you can imagine because it's so close to the end that you can just hold power really easily like the hardest part normally is the, just like from half to three quarters of the way through but on that climb because you know oh i get a rest here you can really push deep there and then basically just why not chill out but reduce the power on the descent and then the very last part it's so close to the end you have so much adrenaline going through you that you can just sprint and i think dan said the kom is about two to three meters before that oh, sign saying that it's the end of the road um, or maybe it's just where the road is ends there and then that is the end of coach road uh, beautiful view of adelaide on the left hand side there um, cheers for watching what are your thoughts on coach road have you done it uh, should i do a tt up it um, i think i probably will at some point uh, when the wind is good so cheers for watching and i'll see you in the next